All right, here we go. Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about how to uh, simplify radicals. Um, we've done square roots before. We've broken down square roots and simplified square roots. So the same philosophy is going to apply. In fact, you'll notice down here in the homework, you have a square root as your first problem, okay? That's just to refresh ourselves of how we do that particular type of problem. In this case, though, we want to talk about what do we do if we have cube roots or fifth roots or something like that. So um, the idea is this. Um, I'm going to take 135 and I'm going to do a factor tree just like I do with the other problems. So if I take 135 and I divide it by 5, I end up getting 27. 5 and 27, okay? Um, some of you guys might recognize right off the bat that that's actually a cube, a perfect cube. It's 3 times 3 times 3. And uh, that's not going to be a surprise because that 3 is going to show up later on. But what we're going to do is we're just going to keep breaking it down because most of you guys probably aren't comfortable with that. So 27 is 3 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. And so really I break it down and I know that I have a 5, a 3, a 3, and a 3, right? Well, with square roots, what we did is we said every pair of numbers that we have pulls out outside the radical sign. With cube roots, the big difference is now I'm looking for threes. See, what I have here is a 3 times a 3 times a 3. So if I can look at it this way, this might make it easier to understand. I've really got 5 and I've got three threes, which I could write as 3 cubed right? And from the last video, you might remember, then I can break this up into two separate radical signs. I've got the cube root of 5 and the cube root of that 3 cubed. Well, the nice thing is, is I have a cube here and I have a cube root here, and those two cancel each other out. This is the same thing as being one third power. So it'd be the same thing as 3 raised, 3 cubed raised to the one third power, right? That's the same thing if you want to look at it that way. That's just this piece right here. And so what happens then is those two multiply out to one and that's just simply a three. So what I have then is really the cube root of five times a three. And what we do is we go ahead and move that thing out front. So we have three times the cube root of five. And that is the simplified version of that. Now we did a three, a group of three here, which was important because we had a cube root. So if we had a fourth root or a fifth root, we'd be looking for five threes in order to be able to pull it out. We have to have the same number as the root is over here. The difference between um, this and the square root stuff is you might remember, um, we don't really like having square roots in the bottom of fractions. So that's what this is, this is dealing with. How do we get that fifth root of eight out of the bottom? Okay, and uh, if you remember what we did, and the last time is we went ahead, if we had square roots, okay, we went ahead and multiplied again by the square root, okay? Um, so for instance, here, here was rationalizing the denominator. If these are square roots instead, square root of seven over square root of eight, we would take both the top and the bottom times the square root of eight. We would do that because that is an essence that is squaring the square root of eight, right? So that would be like this. The, the top would be square root of seven times the square root of eight, that's 56. And the bottom would be the square root of eight times the square root of eight, which is the square root of 64. Now the problem here is, if I do that, this is a fifth root, okay? So if I did this, the same approach, I would only have eight squared, and then I would have a one-fifth power. In other words, I would have eight squared raised to the one-fifth on the bottom, and that's only two-fifths. So I need more than just one square root or one-fifth root sign. In fact, I'm gonna have to keep doing this I'll write it out the long way. You don't have to do this. I'm going to keep on doing this process until I get up to, until I get up to one, two, three, four, five, eights. Why five of them? Because that's what the root is on the bottom, right? And what that gives me then on the top is I have the square root of uh, the, the fifth root, sorry, of seven times eight times eight times eight times eight. I'm going to do that real quick on my calculator. Seven times eight times eight times eight times eight. That is 28,672. Big number. Don't worry about it. On the bottom, I have eight to the fifth power because I have one, two, three, four, five eights multiplied together. And then those are raised to the one fifth power because that's a fifth root, right? These two go away, and I'm simply left with the eight on the bottom. So the simplified version of this is actually 28,672, the fifth root of that, all over eight. That's a little bit confusing. You probably will, 
I don't know if you'll see that much at all, but we got to cover it just in case it's on the end of course exam. Honestly, what I'm doing is I'm going to go through, if it's an end of course exam, I'm going to type this in my calculator. I'm going to get a decimal. I'm going to compare it to the answers. I'm going to find an answer that doesn't have a, square, a fifth root in the, in the bottom. And I'm going to make sure that I have the same decimal in that answer. And I'm going to guess and check my way through it because uh, that seems like a better use of my time. So hopefully that makes sense. Now it's your turn.